Greetings, nerds. Today, we're asking the big questions. What is the meaning of life, and how do you shoot lasers out of your face? Combustion bending is one of the rarest sub-bending abilities, with us having seen only two people ever use it, Spiky Spiky Booman and Pili in Season 3 of Legend of Korra. Come, nerds, gather round. Let us delve unnecessarily deeply into its secrets. And first, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the coming up on 10 thousand people who have bought on writing and world building contains all of my writing and world building scripts extra notes that sort of stuff tons of avatar references as well that number is insane i never expected that it's gone way beyond what i ever could have wanted or expected so thank you and a massive thank you to all of the people who have supported me on patreon recently it's a massive help Thank you so much. And if you want to do so too, there are links to both of those down in the description. In the episode Bitter Work, Iroh describes a fundamental part of firebending. The stomach is the source of energy in your body. It is called the Sea of Chi. And in the very first episode, he establishes the importance of controlling your breathing. Power in firebending comes from the breath, not the muscles. Breath becomes energy in your body. Energy extends past your limbs and becomes fire. This is why mastery of firebending is so often tied to the ability to unleash flame from your mouth, mimicking the imagery of dragons, the true masters and original firebenders. And combustion bending takes these ideas to the next level. The very first shot we ever get of it being used was, I think, very deliberate. He takes a sharp and deep intake of breath. He then tenses his core in an almost disturbing way before unleashing the beam from his forehead. What we're seeing here is a precise and skillful control of these two fundamental bodily things associated with firebending. Breathing and your core, that sea of chi, which I'm not going to show you because I'm not nearly as ripped as that guy. And what's interesting is that the fire chakra discussed by Guru Patik in The Guru is located guess where? Your stomach, precisely where Combustion Man initially draws his power from. And this relationship between mastery of the fire chakra and combustion bending gets even stronger when we consider this quote from Brian Konietzko with regards to Combustion Man's conception. John O'Brien pitched an idea about firebenders combining their concentrated mental power to create nuclear explosions, which led to another idea. The key phrase here is concentrated mental power, which could be rephrased as willpower, and that is really interesting, because the fire chakra is blocked by shame and deals with willpower, which is precisely where they're describing the ability to combustion bend comes from. Together, this suggests combustion bending requires mastery over the fire chakra, intense levels of discipline and willpower, which anyone with a body like that probably has, as well as letting go of one's shame. Though I will add that the relationship between mastery of the chakras and your ability to bend is ambiguous in the lore. Some evidence suggests yes, and a lot of other stuff suggests no. And if you want more information on that topic, then go watch my old vi- Actually, no. Don't go watch my old videos. Let's just leave them in the past. Let's leave them to die in the ground, like Batman's parents, where they belong. But what about the meaning of life? Well, first, we know that these techniques result in the ability to create a compressed fixed point of superheated air with fire and heat and energy that then expands rapidly, creating an explosion. We see this in beautiful slow motion in the beach. And to get a gauge on the power level that we're talking here, Fire Lord Ozai actually does something very similar in Into the Inferno, under the influence of Sozin's Comet. He breathes deeply from his core, and then he creates a point of concentrated heat and fire that he holds back and compresses, restricts. You can actually hear the whistling, like the pressure in a teapot. And then it rapidly expands into a great torrent of flame, seemingly a less specialized form of this combustion ability. And what's really cool about combustion benders, apart from the fact that they can shoot lasers out of their face, is that they seem to be able to stop that fixed point of concentrated heat and energy and fire that explodes wherever they want. It halts mid-air before Aang, and Aang's airbending doesn't kick in till a couple of moments afterwards. But what about the third eye tattoo? What does it do? What does it mean? And yes, it is a tattoo. It says so in the official art book of the series. I was gonna pick it up and show you and everything, but that would ruin my hashtag aesthetic. They weren't born with it, so clearly it's Maybelline. 
Pali's third eye tattoo is slightly different from Combustion Man's, but I derived both from various depictions of the third eye of Shiva, the Hindu god, and this connection with Shiva is a lot more thematically interesting than you might first think. Shiva rarely opens his third eye, and when he does, it destroys whatever his eye falls upon. For example, he burned Kimdeva alive when Kimdeva awoke him from meditation and reignited his desire and love for his first, now past wife. On the one hand, as Combustion Man would say, this highlights the raw destructive power of combustion bending, and that may be all there is to it. But I want to consider a more subtle angle. Shiva's third eye represents insight and perception, seeing things clearly. Likewise, the light chakra is blocked by illusion and deals in insight. The light chakra being located in the forehead, which is where they shoot their beam out of. And theoretically, combustion bending requires some degree of mastery over the light chakra, with a personal revelation or deep insight, much like it may require some degree of mastery over the fire chakra. And after all, we know of a number of other bending techniques that require certain character traits or align with certain philosophies. And if we get into tinfoiling, which we will, I've always found the fact that Combustion Man never talks curious, even when people would normally talk. Maybe they just didn't want to pay a whole other actor. Or maybe Combustion Man took a vow of silence, indicating some deep level of personal revelation or insight that would be needed for mastery of the light chakra, and thus combustion bending. The avatar extras even note that it was said that he does not speak at all, so he's either incapable or he chooses not to for some personal reason that we're never given. Which means we can theorize about it. <laughs> Pali is noted as having a personal revelation that she and Zaheer should seek a life free from oppressive leaders. So maybe, maybe combustion bending requires some great degree of personal insight or revelation, much like they need great willpower. And don't worry, we are getting to the meaning of life. We are this close. Of course, body markings have ritualistic and spiritual significance in the world of Avatar, with airbender tattoos indicating mastery of their element and waterbenders marking their face both in battle or to indicate rank or skill. The third eye tattoo could be a religious thing. It's a theory, and a weak one at that, but it is interesting to consider how all of these ideas might fit together when we're given so little information. An alternative theory that I actually quite like is that the tattoos are a warning. They're put on combustion benders for others to say this person is dangerous, that they don't really have a choice in it. Of course, like, how much more dangerous is a combustion bender as a child? as like a four-year-old baby who realizes they can create fire with their hands and their house is made of wood. Can anyone combustion bend if they believe hard enough though? Well, maybe. Whether specialized bending techniques are inherited is ambiguous in the lore. People in world certainly seem to think that they come with the genes, like with Yakon to Amon, and Pali and Combustion Man both discovered their abilities as children. Pali was noted as a young girl who was rescued from a warlord who wanted to use her as his personal combustion bending assassin, and Combustion Man is noted to have had experienced many trials and errors when he discovered his unique style of fire bending when he was a kid. Hence, the C-3PO. Being so young indicates that it's an ability they likely developed intuitively, and given the rarity of the skill, probably without anyone teaching them, entirely on their own. And the fact that Bolin could lava bend, but not metal bend, indicates you might only be genetically capable of one. But we also know that every other specialized bending technique can be taught, even from a young age and some people master multiple, like water healing as well as blood bending. So put it down for a good maybe. And to return to the tattoos, they may be an indication that anyone can master it, because there is some kind of ritualized process around mastery of combustion bending, something far less likely if you have to be born with it. And the final curious feature of combustion bending that I want to discuss is Combustion Man's downfall. Strike him in the head and their powers backfire. I think this is best understood as akin to chi blocking. Fire bending extends one's chi through the limbs to create fire, but combustion bending extends one's chi and focuses it through your forehead. Chi blocking damages physical points on the body, but those points on your body are linked to how your spiritual energy, your chi, flows. 
damaging your ability to bend. Now we do know that chi blocking doesn't necessarily entirely prevent you from bending. When it happens to Katara for the first time, she can lift the water a tiny bit, but nothing more, it doesn't really go anywhere. This is likely what we're seeing when it happens to both Pili and Combustion Man. They bring the energy forth right up to their forehead, but it's prevented from extending beyond their body, leading to this moment. But the framing of this moment also suggests that you need intense focus, mental stability in order to use the power, hence why it's kind of blurry when it's mimicking his sight looking down at Team Avatar. He's disoriented, contributing to his self-destruction. And that's combustion mending. In summary, we don't know much about it. Oh, I said that I would uh, tell you the meaning of life, didn't I? Uh, kindness? Pizza? Follow the link down below, that'll, that'll tell you, probably, maybe, just follow the link. Also come follow these pages if you want laughs and memes and avatar and that sort of stuff, and if you're feeling kind, pick up my book, Patreon link, all that sort of stuff below. You know the drill, you guys are awesome, stay nerdy, and I will see you in the future.